on the high banks of Atlanta Motor Speedway. Coming up next, the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series Bush Light 300. After three starts of the 28 race, six and a half million dollar Bush Grand National Tour, take a look at the point standings. Two Winston Cup regulars, Harry Labonte and Harry Gant in the top five. But they won't run the entire year. Young Hermie Sadler, last year's Rookie of the Year, looks to be the man to beat when it comes to the championship. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Punch. It's hard to believe this Bush Tour could get any more competitive than it was a year ago. 13 different winners. In fact, three different winners in the first three events of 1994. But the racing is competitive. But how about the qualifying? They came here to Atlanta, 59 cars, tried to make a 43-car field. A lot of good drivers went home. In fact, two of our top six in points struggled. For more, here's John Kernan. Jerry struggling and scrambling, scrambling to try and find a ride. Now, Sterling Marlin normally drives this car on the Bush circuit, but he gave up his ride today so that Hermie Sadler, who he said the man to beat right now in the Bush series, who would be able to start the race and earn some valuable points toward the driving championship. And Hermie, it's not your own car, but hey, you struggled yesterday, you scrambled, and you do have a ride now. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday was probably one of the more disappointing days of my life. You know, we came here and ran hard and, and did the best we could. We just, uh, Virginia's for Love was called. We just had trouble getting it in the field. But, you know, if you want to win the championship, that's what we're all involved want to do. And I just thank God that I've got good friends like Chevrolet and Kodak and Fred Turner and Sterling Marlin, who gave up his call for me. And took a lot of people's okay to get this thing done and we want to take this car to the front today and and be back in Baltimore next week with the Virginia's for Lovers car and continue our points championship chase. Hermie Sadler will start in the four car today. Elton Sawyer will start in Mike Law's car. So some major developments here at Atlanta this weekend and some big surprises. Right, Kyle? Yes, things are definitely changing in Bush Grand National Racing. The top ten used to be dominated by Winston Cup drivers. The surprise this week, there's only three Winston Cup drivers in the top ten. There, another surprise, there's three rookies in the top ten. But I think the biggest surprise at all is, of all is the car that's sitting on the pole. This could be the only other driver in NASCAR racing with a ponytail and an earring just like me. Yeah. I know you're looking forward to some big things. You sat on the outside pole at Rockingham. Here you are on the pole at Atlanta, the, possibly the biggest race of your career starting up front. Uh, what do you think about things? Are you looking forward to it? Are you, are you excited? Are you, are you confident with yourself? All, every one of those things, Kyle. I'm... I'm extremely excited and definitely looking forward to it. We're going to, you know, if the car feels good, I'm going for it and use my head, drive a smart race, but, you know, I'm going to try to keep her up front all day long. The Polaroid car should be real good for us today. Well, she's run good in the past. She run good at Rockingham. She run good last week at, uh, at Richmond, and I know she's looking forward to this race. Back to you, Benny. Kyle Petty in Daytona, I said, who is going to step forward in 1994 and be the hero? Because most of the drivers, the winners, 22 of the 28 races last year were won by either Winston Cup drivers or Bush drivers that moved up to the Winston Cup in 1994. Who's going to move to, up to the plate? No one so far. All three races have been by, won by Winston Cup drivers, so the jury is still out. A guy who did use the Bush Grand National to move up to Winston Cup, Brett Bodine, you had to use the bush to get to Winston Cup. No question, Benny. You know, to run good on Saturday means so much to impress these Winston Cup car owners to try to get a ride on Sunday. You know, I was fortunate I made it in the Winston Cup, and it was all because of my performances on Saturday. But today, 1994, it's even harder than it was in 85-86. No question. Competition is much steeper. The teams are more well-financed. Just today, the top 10 drivers in this race are from 10 different states. That shows what the Grand National Division has done as far as going national rather than regional. It is going to be exciting. Indeed it is, fellas. 43 cars trying to impress us for 300 miles today. Our Speed Love coverage today is being brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Life. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. By Men and Speed Stick Deodorant and Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the number one for movers and shakers. By Pure Later. Legends live on Pure Later. And by New Advanced High Tech Formula Quaker State Motor Oil. It's formulated for today's high tech engines. We'll be back with Atlanta Motor Speedway and the starting lineup, all 43 of them, and look at this mile and a half racetrack in just a moment. Stay with us. compare the new Suzuki RF to a lot of things. Another motorcycle isn't one of them. 
don't miss Suzuki's truly moving, dealing days. Sure, you've got a car. Got a dog. Even got some fun-loving friends. But have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? All it really takes are the two cool beers of the mountain man. Smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. So, be a mountain man. All you gotta do is head for the mountains. This guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick. Any first burn that gives 110%, even if you don't. 24-hour protection against wetness. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick. For movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. Announcing the biggest advance in Quaker State history. It's Quaker State's new advanced high-tech formula motor oil. It gives your engine superior protection against wear. Superior protection against heat and stress. Superior cleaning power. Protect your car's engine with new advanced Quaker State motor oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engines. This is a new car. I'd be crazy not to use Quaker State. Back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, getting set for the Bush Light. 300 here beautiful mile and a half facility here in Hampton, Georgia, about 25 miles south of downtown Atlanta. And you can take a look, fans. No snow this weekend. The blizzard of 93 did not return a year later, thankfully. And we had just a gorgeous day for the fans and the competitors. Take a look at this racetrack here. It is a true oval, one of the very few true ovals in the country today that the NASCAR co cars compete on. 1.522 miles in length, the front stretch, one quarter of a mile, a backstretch a quarter of a mile, a degree of banking, five degrees in the straightaways, and 24 degrees in the turns. And what that says, Jerry, is each turn is a half mile long because this is a mile and a half racetrack. A lot of, a lot of corners here. Very, very tough on the driver and the equipment. Take a look at our Suzuki motorcycle starting grid. There's Shauna Robinson making history today, the first woman ever to start on the pole for a NASCAR Busch Grand National Series event. A brand new track record as she starts alongside the 1992 Series champion, Joe Nemechek. Back in row two. Good effort by Mike Wallace, who won the ARCA 200 in Daytona, right here on ESPN, of course. And Mike looking to get a win here at Atlanta. Randy Porter, a rookie driver. Good effort for him. He starts fourth. Michael Waltrip starts in fifth spot. Only three laps of practice. He qualified fifth. Another rookie driver, only his second ever start, Dirk Stevens, will start sixth. Back to row four, Ernie Irvin, car number 28, looking to get a win here at Atlanta. We'll start inside row four, and Mark Martin, an incredible seven wins a year ago in this race car, he starts eight. Rookie driver Mike Garvey from the all-pro ranks will start inside of row five, and Robert Presley, look for him to be awfully tough today. He's a regular on the series. He starts in 10th place. Row six, Jason Keller. Another rookie in Kenny Wallace in the TIC financial car might be one of the guys to step up in 1994. Row 7, Dale Jarrett, the winner of the Daytona 500 in 1993, and Johnny Benson, another rookie out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Ronald Cooper out of Georgia back in row 8, and my brother, Bill Parsons, on the outside in number 29. Jim Bowden in the inside of the ninth row, and Dale Earnhardt, the GM Goodrich car, on the outside. Look for that guy to go to the front. Kirk Schumerding, his old mechanic of about six years, starts back to Earnhardt in row 10 alongside Chad Little, a young man who's running the entire circuit this year on the Bush Grand National. Elton Sawyer now driving the backup car for Mike Law. Sawyer did not qualify. He's six in the points. You heard John Curtis mention that. Sawyer will start inside row 11. And Tim Fidua, another rookie driver, will start alongside him and outside. Harry Gant. A multi-winner in Bush Grand National Competition went winless a year ago, trying to pick up a win here in 1994. And Randy LaJoy, awfully good runs last year, two second-place finishes in Bush. Rich Bickle will start the car number 98 inside row 13. And the 1992 SCCA Trans Am champion Jack Baldwin makes his Bush Grand National debut at Atlanta. He should be strong. Joe Bessie, a young man who's had terrible luck here in this year and the end of last year, trying to get a sponsor and a win. And Roy Payne, a former ARCA Rookie of the Year. Tom Peck in the car number 31 will start inside row 15. And Richard Petty's owned car, that's the 43 that Petty owns for Rodney Combs, will start 30. 
In row 16, we find Randy McDonald out of Canada and Hermie Saddle. We interviewed him just a moment ago. He's out of Virginia driving the number four car. In row 17, Tracy Leslie out of Michigan and Doug Haveron out of Syracuse, New York in the number 75. Row 18, Richard Lasseter out of California and Bobby Labonte out of Texas. And that's in the Carl Wagner on car. Row 19, Terry Labonte, his brother, and Dennis Setzer. Back in row 20, Ricky Craven, one of the provisional starters. David Green also, that is Bobby Labonte's car that David Green drives. He's a provisional starter. Row 21, Bobby Daughter, Daughter and Mike McLaughlin, two provisional starters. And Larry Pearson, back in row 22. He is a former Bush Series champion. He took the Bush Series champion's provision. And, of course, uh, Larry Pearson, a two-time series champion, as you mentioned, the last two weeks in a row, he... Uh he had to take a provisional to get in the starting lineup. Well, Larry Pearson's a tough competitor, I'll tell you. I know for firsthand, he outran me both years that I ran for the championship. He won the championship. I finished second both times to him. Larry, you know, he's struggling. They, they haven't had a real good qualifying with this car, but they're capable of getting to the front. I'm going to tell you, this is probably one of the most competitive fields I've ever seen in a Bush Series race. We talked about competition. Just to qualify, Brett, 59 cars tried to qualify. 62 were in the garage. Take a look at who's out of here. Who didn't make it in the field? Some names like Morgan Shepard. Man, does he run well here. Won the Winston Cup race here a year ago. Kenny Schrader. Andy Hillenberg has run some, had some good runs in bush racing. Tommy Houston stayed home. Now, Tommy had run 360 consecutive bush series events. Had never missed one in 13 years. Did not have a sponsor. Missed the race at Richmond and did not come to Atlanta. Tommy will hopefully be back when we come back on the air at uh, Darlington in a couple of weeks. And here's a young man who is coming back to Bush Series Racing. Uh, Elton Sawyer driving a backup car. And he had came down Pitt Road. I don't know what he, what he, why he did that, but he did. He had to go to the back of the field anyway because they did change drivers. Elton Sawyer, this car was qualified by Mike Laws out of Orlando. Elton Sawyer is going to drive the car. So he had to go to the back of the field along with Hermie Sadler because they changed drivers. And Kirk Schumerdine crashed in practice on Saturday. He has to go to the rear of the field. John Kernan? Well, Benny, the Mike Laws car crashed. He crashed it yesterday morning. So this is actually Elton Sawyer's original car. But they've been having motor problems. They've put in their fourth motor this weekend. They had to go to Hubert Hensley's team and borrow a motor for today's race. As we get set for green flag racing, the voices you're hearing are Kyle Petty and John Kernan in the pits. Yes, Kyle Petty's a pit announcer today. Brad Bodine, another Winston Cup driver in the booth with Benny Parsons. And yours truly, Jerry Pudge. Glad to have you with us as the Bush cars come down and Carl Sittlins waves the green flag. History is made. Shona Robinson becomes the first young lady to win the pole in Bush Series competition. And she leads the charge in the turns one and two. She's running tough on that inside line. I'll tell you, she really wants to do well today. That's, she's very motivated to go out there. And... They go three wide in turn three. Benny Parsons, Mike Wallace. Oh, crash! Looks like that Mike Wallace was going to lead the lap, and Shana Robinson did not. She crashes, dumps, come back around, does not complete that first lap. They went in the corner three abreast. Oh, that's hard to do, Brett. Now, three wide. Shauna Robinson is tr sees a car beneath her, is trying to get there. She sees Shauna trying to get her car refired, trying to give Mike Wallace some room, but it's tough up there. She moves up to give Wallace some room, and then suddenly there's no room. For this looks like a wide race. The groove is very narrow. As we see the three cars try to get into the third turn together, uh, Mike Wallace and Shauna get together first, then ricochets Shauna up into Joe Nemechek. And then those two drivers are just trying to keep their car uh, away from the rest of the competitors. Uh, it was just a situation where there wasn't enough room for three cars to get in there. And that was the very first lap from that in competition on that black car on the outside. That's 87 Nemechek, a brand new race car, Brett. That was the first lap of competition into the wall. And watch, I tell you, these guys behind do a fabulous job. We could have had a 20 car pileup easily. Joe, Joe Nemechek trying to get his car back to the pit area and, and try to get it repaired uh, so he can get back out. Let's check in with John Kernan, who's standing by in uh, in the Shauna Robinson pit. John? Jerry Terry Allen, the crew chief, surveying the damage. You can see the nose. It's been kind of pushed inside. The hood is pushed up. It doesn't look like there's any frame damage. The wheels still seem to be in line. It's just a lot of sheet metal damage. And they're trying to pull away some of that right front fender. As the pace car goes by, Shauna will lose the lap right here in the pits. 
and the work will continue. They're going to try and get her back out. It looks right, right now that uh, the car is in pretty good shape, other than a lot of sheet metal damage in the front. Well, we have caution here early on. Didn't even complete a whole lap here at Atlanta. We told you the action would be fast and furious, and indeed it is. Caution for the first time today. Back with more of the Bush Light 300 after this. People ask me to endorse the strangest thing. A green recliner? Not much of a sitter. I like going fast. 68 Shelby. And there's only about 300 and some odd made. This car rips. You're oil now. Keeping them up's half the fun. They all get pure later filters. You're oil later. I snag them from the track. Let's just live. A pure later, pure later. Want to know why most NASCAR teams use a Sears die-hard battery? Just ask a guy who didn't use a die-hard. Die-hard, the official battery of NASCAR. For more power when you need it most. Lou, I'm in trouble. I need a good catcher and a 300 hitter. Tom, where's the merger contract? The deal can wait. I need a starter. Rotisserie players are desperate for that information edge. I'm Keith Olbermann. Find out who the experts pick as this year's top values. Before you draft, it's Baseball Tonight's great rotisserie pay-per-view special. Don't tell me Bill needs home runs. I say he needs stolen bases. Rotisserie players, call your cable company now to order this great pay-per-view event. Back in Atlanta, three laps complete of 197. That's a top five. We're under caution here. Didn't even make a lap, as you see our pole sitter, the Polaroid Chevrolet of Shauna Robinson, her car getting worked on. Now, here's what happened here a moment ago. You see Shauna in the middle there. It looks like she just lost traction with the car. She entered the corner. The car did a little bit of a wiggle, and she got into the side of uh, Joe Nemechek. Just a really a tough break for her. She was saw that Mike Wallace was making a move on the inside. I think she just gave him a little bit too much room and got so close to Joe Nemechek, the air off of his car disturbed hers. She lost the back of the car. At the driver's meeting this morning, Ron Pegram, who's the minister that follows the Bush series, he said he prayed for patience. <laughs> hey, Ron, they didn't listen to you very well. No, they didn't. They didn't make it a whole lap. And there is Joe Nemechek's Bell South Mobility Chevrolet. And as you said, Benny Parsons, a brand new car. By the way, we want to tell the folks watching at home, that was not a cameraman standing there by the wall. That was a remote control robotic camera we have there in turn four who got that great shot of what happened here in the first caution of the day. Once again, Carl Simmons' right arm gets a workout as he waves the green flag. And caution lasted three laps. Restart here on lap five. Up front, Mike Wallace, man who won the ARCA 200 at Daytona. The initial race of the 1994 season on ESPN. Trying to get another win on the speedways, this time in Bush Series competition. Ernie Irvin in the yellow and white car on the inside. The Mac Clues car took a look on the inside of Michael Walter. Could make it. And there's Mark Martin you talked about. Started back in about eighth spot. Has moved up to the third looking to the outside of Michael Waltrip. These V6 engines need a little bit more momentum as they exit the corner. If a car runs low, it bogs it down, and the guys in the outside lane can motor on by. We saw they grab that shot of Ernie Irvin trying to go to second. He's all the way back to fifth. And a couple of Winston Cup regulars began to pursue Mike Wallace. He's got a Mike on the inside. It's Waltrip, and he's got Mark on the outside. And now they fall back in single file. So it is Mike, Mark, Mike, and Robert. Those are the top four right now, and it looks like Mark Martin's not going to waste any time with the win. Dixie Ford trying to take the lead. <laughs> that car hooked up in the outside lane. He's gone by everybody on the outside. He made it look awfully easy, as he does so many times in this Bush Grand National Division. We mentioned there were 13 winners a year ago. Mark Martin won seven of the races. Every race he finished, he won. That tells you how tough that car was in 93. 
Looks like Mike Waltrip and uh, Robert Presley went to school with uh, Mark Martin. They both passed Mike Wallace on the outside. They, they found that outside lane a little bit more than they're liking. And here's a guy who's on the move, Dale Earnhardt, the Intimidator. What a story at Richmond, Virginia. Earnhardt, for the first time in 579 attempts, did not qualify for a NASCAR race. He came back to Atlanta with a vengeance and is now trying to make his way toward the front, being shown back one in about 17th spot right now. He's trying to get by Randy Porter. That's Randy in the 35 car. And Earnhardt makes that pass. You ever see Jason Keller on the inside of Ernie Irving? It makes the pass, and he made the pass on the inside, but pretty impressive. Yes, very strong. It, it looks like he's got a car that's working well on the low lane. Now, here comes Dale Jarrett down the inside of uh, Ernie Irving, and it looks like he's going to get the spot also. Ernie Irving not having a car handling very well for him. That's the car he owns, and that tool sponsored for it as Dale Jarrett brings the Shoe World Chevrolet toward the front. What a great run Jarrett had in Daytona on ESPN, finishing second to Earnhardt. And while we were watching the action in the back, we had action up front, and Benny Parsons, we got a new leader. Michael Waltrip. Hey, I tell you what, Mark Martin at Winn-Dixie Ford doesn't get passed very often, but watch this. Wow! Looked like Mark got in the corner just a little too deep and, and, and realized he needed to check up and, and re-evaluate his group. And Michael just went out by. Well, Mark's getting Mark back. Exactly. Mark tries to make a move back on the inside. Looks like he just decided to think I'll just take a yawn for a moment and uh, back off the throttle and Michael went around him. Now Mark makes it look easy. Looks like they're having some fun out there. Well, let me tell you, a Bush Grand National car is a lot of fun to drive compared to a Winston Cup car. These guys come out here on Saturday and have a blast racing these cars. They're so much fun, so wonder horsepower, they can just really manhandle them and have a good time with them. Having a blast at 175, 80 miles an hour. Is that a blast? Sounds like my way to spend a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> 3,200-pound cars as opposed to 3,500-pound Winston Cup cars that'll run uh, tomorrow here in Atlanta. And, of course, uh, V6 engines versus uh, that push about 490 horsepower versus a V8, uh, which is what, over almost 700? 720 in most of the cars today. And it just makes it a lot easier for the driver to drive the car. You get them around here and, and make them move in the passes. It, it's just a lot of fun to do. Cooper in the 56. He's up behind Kenny Wallace. Bill Parsons is trying to follow Earnhardt through the traffic. The black and yellow cars, Ronald Cooper, Johnny Cotton, and Mike Wallace has dropped back to this group. See the nine car, the FDP brakes car that led that first lap has dropped all the way back to this spot. Ernie Irvin and Mike Wallace both have dropped back to this group and uh, you know, it looks like Phil Parsons got an awful good handling race car. He just dropped to the bottom of the racetrack, drove up the inside of Kenny Wallace, and ran out by. He followed Ronald Cooper right to the front. And what a run Phil Parsons had a year ago at Michigan. Boy, was he impressive in a Bush car. He's on. That's the Matchbox uh, Collectibles machine. As we got a battle back up front for a third spot. Jason Keller, what an impressive run for the 24-year-old driver. That's him in the 57 car right behind Robert Presley in an unsponsored car number 99. Jason really got up close to Robert right there and looked like it upset his car a little bit going off the corner. Robert had to check up. Jason just a week going into the three on the inside. What a real strong race car he's driving. Today. Jason Keller, 24 years of age, a former All-Pro Rookie of the Year back in 1990. Finished third in the point standings in 1991. We had a limited schedule last year here in Bush Series competition. And here's Kenny Wallace, Benny, who's slowing down. Off the pace. Looks like he's got some kind of engine problem or ignition problem, something like it. But it looks like it's dead in the water. And a, a guy I thought maybe might be able to step up the plate in 94. Having problems already. Another guy who thought he was going to win today, Joe Nemechek, is with Kyle Petty as we have a pass for the lead. Joe, you started on the outside pole. You won last week coming off a big high. What, what did it look like? You were between a rock and a hard place. What did it look like from your angle? Uh, I, got, I got caught up in it, and you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak my mind right now. Uh, you know, before the race, uh, some people came down and told me what Mike Wallace was going to do. He was going to get up under Shauna and get her loose at the start of the race, and, and he did just what he said. And Shauna got loose and took me out with it. And it's wrong. You know, we have belts out and Zintas on our cars. Brand new people trying to get into the sport. And it looks terrible. The first lap, we're in the wall. And, you know, it's wrong. I think NASCAR should penalize Mike Wallace. I mean, he, he did it intentionally, got Shauna loose. And 
we've been having these big powwows, you know, hey, we're supposed to be safe drivers looking out for each other. Well, that wasn't too safe, and I think he could have injured a lot of people, including myself and Shauna and the rest of the field. And, you know, it's just a tough day. We'll be back. We'll be ready for Winston Cup tomorrow. That's Joe Nemechek, Benny. I wonder, if, his piece, didn't I he? wonder if Joe would, would have an opinion. Ernie Irvin is involved in the 75 of Doug Hamrock. Charlie Henson's car. Here comes the car sliding through at 170 miles per hour. That's the car number 95 that has come to rest back there. That is Jack Baldwin, the Marietta, Georgia driver. Hebron gets going. Here's a, as you see the roof flap on the Hebron car, the roof flaps once again doing their job. Kept those cars backwards on the ground. And Brett, that has got to be a comfort for the drivers. It really is. I'll tell you, you know, we were so impressed uh, with the spins at Daytona, the cars, the flaps coming up. Here's a replay of what happened. Uh, the pack of cars, Doug Hebron leading that pack, gets loose outside of uh, Rodney Combs in front of that pack of cars and Ernie and... Uh, the rest of the guys really no place to go did a great job getting by i don't think anybody hit anything and there we see jack ball and spin through but i don't think anyone hit anything this is amazing did you see the flaps come up on the 28 car i noticed the ones on the 75 but his flap his right outside flap is still up a little bit on that car uh, 75 the food country car but the 28 car got backwards and both flaps popped up and stayed up until the car moved back around and they came back in a normal position a tremendous, tremendous added uh, uh, comfort zone for the drivers and the other cars won't lift up. Working the second caution flag of the day due to a three-car incident coming out of turn two. Back with more of the Bush Light 300 from Atlanta Motor Speedway after this. Track facts are brought to you by New Advanced High Tech Formula Quaker State Motor Oil. It's formulated for today's high tech engines. Several years ago, NASCAR mandated that all cars, both Winston Cup and Bush Grand National, would have to run a window in the right side at Daytona and Talladega. This is an aid to keep the car on the ground in case of a spinout. Well, since then, NASCAR has reviewed and decided, hey, all racetracks above one mile need this window. Now, the question is, if the car is spun up against the outside retaining wall or another car, how does the driver get out? We're in Andy Hillenberg's Budget Gourmet shop. In his Chevrolet, he's sitting in there. Hey, Andy, can you get out this window? Yeah, Benny. All right, show me how. We'll get the steering wheel off first and start heading in that direction. Then we have a seat belt here to hold the window in place. Hit the latch, pull it back, let it slide out there, and just start crawling. Well, come on, Andy. Thing might be on fire. <laughs> Plunk that so you can get out of there. Yeah, I might have to lose another couple pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I was waiting to see if you were going to get out of that window, BP. There's not a way in this world I'd get in that window, much less out of that window. <laughs> now, let's take a look at our pit stop summary. In first, out first, can't beat that, but that was fuel only, as you heard John Kernan say. Jason Keller, a new crew, a young crew, came in second, out six. Michael Waltrip, third and third. Gant, fourth and fourth. And Ronald Cooper, just coming back with a new crew, had trouble in the pits. Let's check in with John Kernan. With Jerry, I talked to his Steve Neal, who Mark Martin's crew chief. He's been busy running up and down pit, pit road, checking all the guys who changed their Goodyear tires. He's seeing not a lot of wear. In fact, they, from their fastest lap to some of their slowest laps without traffic involved, they had only lost about a tenth to two tenths of a second. Mark said, let's not change tires. Let's not do anything to the car right now. And Steve told me, hey, there's 150 laps left. Yeah, I'm going to save another set of tires to use under caution if I get the chance. And just as you said, Brett Bodine, they're going to save those tires. The rules are meant to, to try to minimize the cost in this series. And NASCAR very wisely said, let's going to have just two sets of tires or eight tires total under caution. And as you said, they've made the call to save them for later. There's a perfect example. Those guys, this rule just saved Jack Roush the price of a set of tires. If there had been no rule, they would have definitely put four tires on. But because they could only put two on the yellow, they're going to save them for the end of the race. And a set of tires. We're not talking about $300, folks. We're talking about $1,200 for four tires. They're $300 a piece. But Jack is one of the guys that probably could afford another set uh, down there. Not that he's trying to be cheap. He's just being smart, as uh, you heard John Kernan and Steve Mill talk about a moment ago. That's the car that Jack owns. That's the car that's leading the race right there. The car number 60, the Win dixie Ford Thunderbird. Mark Martin. Seven times he went to victory lane in 1993. Every time that car finished, it won. 
This year, Mark Martin came close to winning at Daytona with just a few laps to go. He had a problem with the engine, and he parked it. He's trying to pick up his first win of 1994. Back to green flag racing, lap 52. Look at Dale Earnhardt. Made a pit stop and moved up to second spot. And I don't know if he changed tires or not. I didn't watch. He might have something for Martin. <laughs> Averaging over 170 miles per hour, and just as you said, Benny Parsons Earnhardt is staying right there, a couple of car lengths back. It is Martin Earnhardt, Waltrip, and Gant. Before the caution, we saw that the trouble the car low on the racetrack. We'll see if the adjustments they might have made during the pit stop let him keep the car closer to the bottom of the racetrack. So far, it's working for him. He's right out of Mark Bowman's bumper. We know that Michael Walter changed four tires. We watched that and heard Kyle Petty report that. Remember, Dale Earnhardt started back in 18th position. Now, just after lap 50, he has moved to second spot by virtue of some great pit work and some aggressive driving. Earnhardt wouldn't be aggressive, would he? <laughs> Dale Jarrett in the right of your screen. That's the pick and pay shoe world Chevrolet. As he begins to make his way toward the front. Bobby Labonte, what a good job he's done. With earlier, starting back in the pack, bringing the car number 33. He's being shown in seventh position. Here's Earnhardt closing up right on the back bumper of Mark Martin. Michael Walker trying to pass Earnhardt going in the third corner. So Mark might walk those tires. You may wish, oh boy, why didn't I change those tires? We'll see. Here comes Earnhardt. Yes, sir. Michael Walter follows. And here he is. Well, very similar to that problem Mark had early in the race. Earnhardt has certainly made his way to the front in a hurry. Earnhardt, the new leader here in Atlanta. Let's check in with Kyle Pitt. You talked about Mark Martin not changing any tires, and we talked about Michael Walker changing four tires. Dale Earnhardt made a chassis adjustment and only changed two tires. And it seems like his car seems to be working best, Benny. Gotcha. No question, his chassis adjustment really worked well for him because that's the best his car's looked all day. Good run for Joe Bessie in the car number 97. Here's a young man that nearly won this race at Atlanta last November. Came close to winning last week at Richmond. Was leading the race, and the car spun, and he tagged the car and wiped out to the car he had up there. He's hanging with them in the top five. Him and Jason Keller are just out of the front pack, but I got a feeling they're going to catch up here just a little while. We've got a car in the wall coming off the fourth corner. Heavy impact in the outside wall with the car number 05. That's Randy McDonald, the Canadian driver. He is. You see the sheet metal damage on the right side of that car. He sort of flattened it like someone just took a, a big waffle iron and pushed down on the right side of the car. Still as yet, no caution flag from Carl Simmons as McDonald's car is down out of the groove. He's not going to make it back, though. I don't think the car will. Maybe he pulls off down toward the record, so maybe they will get him through the infield back. That's the Curtis Key Motorsports Chevrolet. The 1993 ASA Rookie of the Year, Randy McDonald, having trouble here on lap 56. And we see the Mark Martin is falling back. Again, he has saved the tires, but if the caution flag shouldn't come out, we can see he's all the way back in six spots, just losing that to Bobby Labonte, back to seventh right now, so... He needs a caution flag 20, 30 laps from now to be able to make that move pay off for him. Yeah. <laughs> with as much of this racetrack as we showed you, that's in the corners. Fresh tires make a big difference. Caution flag now being shown for the fourth time today. Caution being waved by Carl Simmons. There's Earnhardt and Michael Waltrip, Gantt. This will definitely help Mark Martin, whose car was dropping off the pace. Back with more from Atlanta Motor Speedways. We're under caution after this. Joe Bessie, a great run in third spot. Michael Waltrip is fourth, and Bobby Labonte in fifth. And heavy impact, Roy Dean in the car number 27 has tagged the wall, the former ARCA Rookie of the Year, his second season in Bush Grand National Racing. 
has hit the wall a ton, as they say in NASCAR racing, uh, over in uh, the turn three. Michael Waltrip was slowing down. Hopefully, he just saw the crash happening, and uh, but there's no problem with his car. Let's watch and replay and see if we can figure out what happened to Roy Payne. Here he goes down in the corner. No problem. And he just loses control. That car on the outside. Tim Fedewa. Ooh, many back in the wall hard. Tim Fedewa, the fit white 55, was on the outside. And when you go in the corner and a car on the outside, you just, that cushion of air, it takes it away and makes the cars go around a little bit easier. There's an electrical fire. Apparently, Michael is waving. You see him waving uh, at the window. Apparently, uh, he's got a problem with the car. The car is still very, very slow. And he's waving to the... Apparently, uh, Brett, uh, in the driver's meeting, the drivers are taught to wave your arm and signal people. Well, I think what Michael's doing is he's preferred he's not going to make it back to the pits. He wants someone to pull up behind him and give him a push. So Michael was trying to take his left hand and say, come, give me a push. Here's, let's check in with Kyle Petty. Well, Michael had radioed his pits and said he has a, a, an electrical fire. So if he's got an electrical fire, there's some smoke in there. It's stinking. He's wanting to get out of the car. He's wanting to stop. But he's wanting to get some help to get back around here so maybe they can fix the thing, switch over to the second ignition if too much is not burn up, and head back out again. Maybe. Well, I don't see a lot of smoke in the car, so maybe it's not too bad inside it. If we saw a bunch of smoke inside an electrical fire, believe me, he would stop that car over there and get out because Kyle you're right. You could not stand the smell. Here we see now they've decided to change four tires on that wind Dixie car now. We see them in the pit, right side on, right side being put on right now. The left front's finished. Steve Meal is done with his job. The left rear guy gets done. Car gets down and away he goes. So we finally use that set of tires. So we can expect to see that 60 car go back to the front. And it looks like, is he going to make it, Jerry? Well, he's trying. He's just now rolling into the entrance of pit road up in turn four, and he's pitting just past the start-finish line, so he's probably a good... And now the crew heads down that way. Ronnie Silver, the crew chief on the car, to try to give him a push. And as you heard Kyle Petty say, he has an electrical fire. The and car's out running them. <laughs> they can't they, keep up. <laughs> oh, but he is eventually going to slow as the car is now making its way up pit road. And... Uh, he, uh, the field now coming through turns three and four, so Michael is going to be put uh, at least another lap down as the Pennzoil Pontiac makes its way up uh, and heads toward his pits. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh at guys because I couldn't have run that far to save my life, but it was so fun to see the car go by him and it couldn't catch up. We'll check on what happens in the Pennzoil pits when we come back as we're under caution here in Atlanta for the fifth time today in the Bushlight 300. Back after this. And Brett Bodine and yours truly, Jerry Punch. Uh, speaking of John Curran, let's check back in with him. Well, you remember that great run that Chad Little had at Daytona where he also helped Dale Earnhardt get back into position? Well, it doesn't look like it's going to happen for Chad today. He's running on only five cylinders. They think they've broken a rocker arm. They're going to try and nurse it the rest of the way. Now, Johnny Benson Jr. also running on only five cylinders. That, they think that that was an ignition problem. Steve Bird and the crew have made some changes under the hood. He's been in and out of the pits, and they hope to have that problem corrected. But we're seeing a few more of these engine problems develop here on pit road. Indeed, a tough break for... Uh, after a great run in Daytona, started dead last. He was the last car to make it in by qualifying. We're talking about Chad Little, and he ended up finishing third behind Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett. Getting set for green flag racing, we are just 10 laps away from the halfway point. It'll be 150 miles complete, still 150 to go, as the pace car leads them now double file. Dirk Stevens leading the race, qualified up in the top 10, fell back has worked his way back to the front. He probably didn't stop this time and change tires. Harry Gant right behind him, ran in LaJoy. Dirk, how long can you stay there? We're going to find out because a green flag is waving. The 1993 Winston West Tour Rookie of the Year, Dirk Stevens, had not seen Atlanta Motor Speedway except on television until he got here on Thursday. Actually, he came last week and tested a few laps, but he is running only his second Bush start ever. And boy, was he impressive at Richmond a week ago. down the back straightaway. Let's watch. That's a Ford that Dirk Stevens is driving. Car he bought from Bill Elliott. And now Gant will take the move to the inside out of turn four. Pulls up even with him and will have the lead as they come by to put off lap number 91. 
at Brandy LaJoy on the inside of Dirk Stevens. Brandy's just kind of been hanging around here all day. Maybe he's got something saved up for the, towards the end of the race. And Terry Labonte has made a move underneath. There's Mark Martin trying to make his way back toward the front. You saw during those pit stops that he, Steve Mill and the crew gave him some fresh Goodyear rubber. So he's making his way toward the front. Dennis Setzer in the 59 car is there. We saw uh, Steve Mill's crew working on the Win Dixie Ford. John, what'd they do? You know, Jerry, with the radial tires, what I've seen these teams do, instead of playing with the wedge bolts in the back of the car, jack and wedge, taking it out, what they do is they make pressure adjustments. Mark's car was running a little bit loose, so they made a little pressure adjustment in the tires, and they think that they will have that car right where it needs to be. And remember, they've still got four tires left to change under caution, and they can go a little further distance than some of these other teams who changed tires earlier. Well, indeed, they make a slight adjustment. Fred, I'm told they make an adjustment down to a quarter pound of air pressure in the tire. I'll tell you, it's a very small amount of air pressure can make a night day difference in the way the car performs on the racetrack. The tire guy is really the main guy on Sunday when it comes to making adjustments. Fred, who in the world tried that to begin with? I mean, one pound of air pressure, come on. That seems so small, it would make no difference at all, but I know that it does because everyone is doing it. But one thing that you have to understand is one pound of air pressure uh, on cold tires, as those tires are run on the racetrack and they build up, that can change three or four pounds in the buildup. So consequently, it's the buildup pressure that you're really trying to adjust, not necessarily the initial pressure. I got you. I found it. Good battle on the racetrack for second, third, and fourth. Randy LaJoy has the Chevrolet, the FINA Chevrolet, owned by Dick Moroso in second spot. Terrible coming from back in the pack. That's the car that Warner Rockingham on the second stop on the 1994 Bush Tour. He is in third spot, and Joe Bessie, we keep missing Joe Bessie's name. The young man is driving the wheels off that Chevrolet. That's the car that got wrecked at Daytona, and they worked around the clock to put it together. Labonte taking over that second spot on the inside of LaJoy down in turn one. M.W. Windows and Chevrolet tries yeah. to take it away, but LaJoy won't let him. Boy, was Randy LaJoy impressive a year ago on ESPN. He finished second at Talladega, second at Dallas. Had some great runs in that car. Plans on running five Winston Cup shows. Hangs on the outside. The car slips a little bit. Up in the same turn where we had that first caution flag today with Shauna and Nemechek and Mike Wallace. But now Terry Lavani makes the pass. We'll see if Bessie can make the move. But he is down on the bottom of the racetrack. Looks like they're drafting back out. How important is the draft here, Brett? Well, it definitely can help you out. There's no question that the straightaway speed can be increased if you stay in line. We'll see this happen. Uh, Joe Bessie was down on the bottom of the racetrack by himself after they fell single file. And now the outside lane is going by now Dale Jarrett is going to try to get by on the outside we saw Mark Martin in the pick of just a moment ago come into the pit there's Mark Martin on the inside trying to get by it's Robert Presley down underneath Dale Jarrett now Mark Martin's going to try to jump underneath Dale he does it Jarrett was making his way toward the front a moment ago and suddenly his car just got very high in the turn about a half a lap ago. The car has developed a serious handling problem as he dies back in the corner. That's Terry Labonte, the MW Windows car you're watching there. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, all right together. Mark Martin on the outside of Preston takes his spot away. As Joe Bessie, Earnhardt goes by LaJoy, takes his spot. Now Bessie going to try to follow Earnhardt. That's for third, fourth, and fifth. Bessie takes the fourth spot. Here is Martin to take the fifth spot away from Randy LaJoy. Martin down on the bottom of the racetrack. And as Brett Bodine mentioned a moment ago, he's not really helping Mark Martin right now, but he's got some horsepower trying to hold that bottom groove in turn three. Right there we see Mark Martin's new tires take effect. Right in the middle of the corner when you want to get back in that throttle, Mark was able to get in the throttle two, three car lengths sooner than Randy LaJoy and just drive right by him. Talk about disappointment early today. Our poll setter, a record setter, and a young lady who put her name in the history book, Shauna Robinson, is standing by with Kyle Petty. Yeah, Shauna, you made history. You sat on the pole. You had some high expectations, and you got in that first lap accident. And I'm going to have to tell you up front that Joe Nemechek absolutely blasted Mike Wallace on the deal. What did you see? You were kind of sandwiched in between them. Why happened? Oh, I, I was definitely in between them. I knew Joe was on the right. My spotter just said you got a car coming on the inside. And I held my line, and he flat turned right. 
right side to prove it. You know, it, it just shows what kind of class somebody has out there. And there was a statement made before the race that he said he was going to do that. And, you know, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. But if he thinks that that was going to benefit him, I think he's got another thing coming. You know, we had a good race car out here, and I'm working hard to get where I am. And if somebody just can't take the fact that a woman's in racing and he thinks he's going to do something like that, I'm not walking away. So we've got a lot, lot more races this year. And, you know, I'm never going to trash anybody on TV. You know, we're all race car drivers, but... You can see she's upset, but she's still got a smile on her face, Benny. Boy, boy, she is a fireball, and that's why she's such a good competitor and a great race car driver. Not only is she gorgeous, she has got a tremendous amount of spirit. And good for you, Shauna. And by the way, fans, we are going to try to talk to Mike Wallace if we can when the race is over and get his side of the story to be fair to all involved in what happened on lap one. Just past the halfway point in Atlanta Motor Speedway, we've got a wild one going. Stay with us. Back with more after this. Old Harry Gant, his final year of racing of any kind, Winston Cup, Bush Grand National, and he leads the show here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. He's the leader. Who's running second? Well, we're going to widen out a little bit and show you Mark Martin in the car number 60, and uh, Mark is trying to come, but Harry has got that car dialed in. I tell you what, I think Harry Gant might be gaining a little bit. We'll have to check that out because Mark had all kinds of problems getting through the traffic, and Harry Gant just drove away. There's Joe Bessie. Trying to get by Earnhardt. This is a third place battle. And Earnhardt up on the outside of the racetrack gets momentum. Stays in front of Bessie, but Joe's going to come back on the inside, try it up in three and four. Side by side battle for third spot here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Joe Bessie holds off Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Earnhardt. He's coming back, so Joe Bessie still can't take that spot away. I think Joe saw that lap car up ahead and just decided to get back in line. No sense of pressing the issue. Way too early in the race to be making dangerous maneuvers. And uh, Joe's really running a smart race. I'll tell you, he, he's been learning from Dale here on how to get around this racetrack. He's, he's got an awful You see Jim Bowden going behind the wall. That's the Deluxe Beans car out of Seat Grove North. Let's talk about sponsors complimenting. He's got two sponsors on that car. He's got Lux, which is uh, Pinto Beans. It's one sponsor. You know what the other sponsor is? I saw spray, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, back here. Oh, the Ronald, Ronald Cooper slows down the front straightaway. Looks like he's lost an engine, and that is so bad. Had a great run going. Was running about fourth place. As we see Joe Bessie once again trying to get by Earnhardt. Got a run on him this time. Might have the pass made. Earnhardt's going to come back. Bessie moves up the racetrack. Joe getting a little loose over there. Right in the center of the corner. He almost lost it. And he pulls down on the inside, and Earnhardt has another good run at him, but Bessie's trying to hug that bottom groove. They go back for turn one. 32-year-old driver Joe Bessie, 1988 Bush Grand National North Rookie of the Year. In 92, he finished second up in the North Tour to Dick McKay by a scant six points. And here's Ronald Cooper down on the inside apron. Let's check in with John Kernan. Well, Jerry, once again, it looks like engine problems. Ronald Cooper has started running the, with a skip in the motor. It could be something going into the valve train. It quite possibly could something be in the ignition. They will bring him on to pit road to see if they can get the problem fixed and get him back out there. Cooper was very, very anxious to get this race started today. As Jerry said earlier, it's been 1990 since he ran the full schedule on the Bush Series, and he has really made a a very good run so far in this race this year. You know, Ronald Cooper came back and ran the last three main events of 1993. Martin Barack in Atlanta. He had a 12th place finish in Atlanta in this same car last year and was running in sixth spot prior to that problem here just a moment ago. It looks like that Mark's getting just a little bit. Here's a race four. What's his race four? Ninth spot. Dale Jarrett on the outside in ninth and Bobby Labonte in tenth. Okay, we reverse that. Dale Jarrett's back in tenth. Labonte is ninth. And while we're talking about the Jarrett family, we ought to tell the folks that Dan Jarrett has some surgery uh, about two weeks ago. Bobby Hickory, North Carolina, he decided to stay home this weekend, recuperate. He will be back at, at Darlington, all charged up and ready to go. Me, Brett Bodine sitting in for Ned Jarrett. And we're glad to have Brett here. We look forward to having Ned back. And Ned had a little uh, surgery on his neck. And I, I, I was, he said something about a pitch there, but the, the, the real story, Benny, he wanted to be able to keep his head down for those tee shots. <laughs> Look at Rich Bickle. Where'd he come from? That's 
for position. He's running right up there. That's six five. Wow. Started back in 25th position. Johnson driver Rich Bickle in the Bondo Chevrolet. Driver Plus is driving by Dale Earnhardt going down in the third turn. And uh, Rich Bickle looks like he's trying to make the same move coming off the of turn four. Rich Bickle making his first ever Bush Grand National start. He's run Winston Cup and some ARCA events, but never run a Bush race. Tried to qualify before, but made the field and doing a pretty good job here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. That's four spot. Here comes Harry Gant. And look, Mark Martin right behind him. So he is gaining Brent. No question that Mark's tire change has definitely picked him up. Uh, he's, this car's handling much better, and he's making ground on the winner here again. Here's back to the battle for uh, second, play, third place. It's a big one on the inside. Presley on the outside. Preston the black 99, the 98 on the inside. This is for third. And Bickle's got him. We mentioned Ronald Cooper had slowed. He has now come to a complete stop in his standing with John Curtis. Well, Ronald, that's a disappointing end to your day. You were running so well, but something in the engine broke. Yeah, we were running real well. The, uh, right there, probably about 50 laps into the race, we dropped back a little bit because I noticed the oil temperature was going up. But, you know, uh, we thought we thought something might be going wrong with the motor, but what not to do but run it wide open and let it go. Well, Ronald Cooper still with a smile. He'll be back next week. Good to have you back on the series, Ronald. Cheers. Thank you, John. Ronald Cooper, a very talented driver. And you heard Brett Bodine say earlier, he raced his first start in this series, and he was quite a competitor. Talking about competition, Bessie trying to hold off Earnhardt. His car got a little bit squirrely, and Earnhardt makes the move. Well, no, no. Bessie's still trying to pass Earnhardt. He's still trying to pass Earnhardt. He's still passing that make it. He gets alongside when he go in the corner. Earnhardt up on the top side of the racetrack, drives past him. Dale Earnhardt, the winningest driver, active driver now in Bush competition. 22 career victories, 18 on super speedway. And there we see the Mark Mark. Closing ever so slowly. And Harry Gant is our leader. Let's take a look at our AutoZone recap here. Our leader, Gant, has led 34 of 110 laps. There have been 14 lead changes among eight drivers. 20 cars on the lead lap as of lap 110. Five caution flags. The average speed, a shade over 120 miles per hour. Lap leaders, take a look there. Mark Martin, who's closing in a hurry, has led 39 laps. Gant, who still leads, has led 37. Earnhardt, Waltrip, Mike Wallace, and Chad Little being shown as the leaders, along with Joe Bessie and Dirk Stevens. Now to race, Elton Sawyer, Mike McLaughlin, Magic Shoes is gone, Ernie Irvin, Joel Parsons had trouble with the transmission, Doug Hebron involved in an incident, and Joe Nemechek, the victim of that first lap crash. Randy McDonald tagged the wall, Roy Payne hit the outside wall in turn three, and Shona Robinson has just gone to the garage area. And look at Mark Martin, we just gave the honors on recap. Mark was patient enough to wait for that to be complete, and now Mark's going to make his pass. He's going to try to make his pass. No, he's going to make his pass. Well, let's see now. Who's right? Uh, looks like Jerry's right. I'm, he makes that pass. <laughs> Mark Martin did a heck of a job. And, and, a, and about uh, six laps ago, he had about a 20-car length deficit. Now he's got about four and pulling away from here again. He starts off with well through the center of the corner again. You've got to have a car that can roll through the center of the corner. We saw Mark take Harry down into that corner. Harry slid up. Mark was able to spot him right on by coming up. 120 laps are complete. 197 as you look from high above Atlanta Motor Speedway. As we get set for the final laps here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We'll be back with more in the Bush Light 300 after this. At AutoZone, most of our customers are folks who like to work on their cars themselves. But the ones who come in most often are those who work on cars for a living. Guys like Ed Graven. Now, Ed's garage is in Ogden, Utah, where most of the time you'll find him pulling an engine or sliding under a car. And just about every day, he drives past a half dozen other parts stores on his way to AutoZone. Because Ed knows that when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Announcing the biggest advance.
in Quaker State history. It's Quaker State's new advanced high-tech formula motor. Leader Harry Gant second. Rich Pickle, a great run in third spot, his first ever bush start. Robert Presley is fourth. Dale Earnhardt is holding the fifth position. And that is a great battle as you're watching right there. Just look at our field summary. Earnhardt, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, eight cars all together. On the outside, Joe Bessie beneath him. The 20 car, Randy Little Joy, is behind him. Tracy Leslie is back there. And Dennis Setzer in the Alliance Training Center Chevrolet. And look at Larry Pearson. Started shotgun on the field. We had a little bit of a, almost a collision there between Randy LaJoy and Joe Bessie. That's all Bessie needs is another wreck. Oh man, man, oh man, he's seen enough of those. He must see those in his dreams. Randy LaJoy makes the pass. Now he's going to try to get by. Bessie's been trying to do it. We're going to try this for a while. It's about a half a lap behind the leaders. The car on the top of your screen, that is Larry Pearson, who started 43rd shotgun on the field, the two-time Bush Series champion. That's the Mack Martin on Stanley Coon Chevrolet. And boy, what a job Larry has done to bring that car toward the top ten. If there's a guy that can come from the back of the pack, it's Larry Pearson. Very patient driver, never in a hurry. That is Setzer, awfully crooked right there, coming off the second turn. He did a great job of getting back under control. Boy, whole lot crooked. Boy, did his heart skip a beat there with that big left-hand turn. There's Earnhardt, Joe Bessie. Again, once again, we're looking at 6th, 7th, and 8th as Randy LaJoy has moved in front of that group to take over the fifth spot. Going around the car number 43 of Rodney Combs, a Richard Petty on Black Flag Pontiac. Oh, Bessie got hung behind him, losing all those spots. He worked so hard to get up there, got hung behind Rodney Combs and lost all those spots. Every one of those cars goes by, with the exception of Dirk Stevens. I mentioned Dennis Setzer now being shown in the top seven. He had a great run in his first attempt at Atlanta back in November. Had come from the back of the pack and was running six with a few laps to go and got tangled up with Chad Little, two cars spinning and missing out on what was a great opportunity for a top five finish in last year's finale in Bush Racing. That's your fourth place car, right? That black 99 of Robert Preston. There's Earnhardt, who's currently running what, seventh? Seventh, and then behind him is Setzer. And Setzer's going to take a look at the seventh spot, but Earnhardt holds a bit of room. 69 laps remain. Setzer now will try to take the spot away from Earnhardt. That seventh position being contested. It's a drag race to turn one, and Setzer will have the advantage at least entering the turn. And we got a bit. Oh, Earnhardt gets way high. He got a little crooked down there too, Brett. He ran it in that first turn awfully deep and just got up high, headed towards that light gray area. He knew enough to get out of the throttle and give up the spot. Take a look at Dennis Setzer, started 38, made his way patiently, very, very patiently toward the front, and right now he is being shown in sixth position. A lot of people compare him with the late Butch Lindley and his driving style, a very patient, a very kind driver, doesn't use up the race car, but always makes his way to the front when it's time to go. Looks like someone that's used up the race car is Dale Earnhardt. He's on the backslide. He's really fighting the car, running at high lane, trying to get a hold of any part of the racetrack he can. And he's just not having any luck up there because he's driving by him now on the inside. And I'll tell you what, they've got to get going because as they come off turn four, the leader, Mark Martin, right now is going in turn three. So, here we see Martin. He's coming off four right now. Right behind Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's in jeopardy of losing a lap. Dale Jarrett, the 15th and final car on the lead lap, and that is Mark Martin moving in in a hurry on the pick and pay Chevrolet. Martin will move up and go around Dale Jarrett and put him a lap down. Now there's 14 cars on the lead lap. A moment ago, Terry Labonte was running for the lead, and now he's trying to keep losing the lap. There we see the 97 and 3. Hey, this, hey, same deal. How many, how many laps have we seen this? Brett, about 25 now. Joe Bessie on the inside. Earnhardt on the outside. Kyle Fetty, what's Earnhardt doing? Has he got a problem or what? First car, basically what has happened is he stopped early. Like I said, when we were talking about Mark changing, not changing tires, Earnhardt put on two tires. He put on right side. The last car was like 85 or 86. He only put on left side.
laps. So he's got all the laps he run before that on the right side, plus the last 40 or 50 laps. So the car is really loose, Vinny. I got you. That's a great report because Earnhardt has only changed that right side. Now, who's that spun? That was smoke out of one car as he, he went up across the racetrack and headed down pit road. The right front tire, the, he's hit the wall. That car has hit the wall. That's Presley has nailed the wall hard. He's coming down pit road, and I hope he can stop. Robert Presley in the car number 99, who qualified 10th, and the right side of that car is hurt heavy. Earnhardt getting lapped by Mark Martin. There he goes. Earnhardt's on the outside. Chattanooga lap down. It's Randy Porter in the 35. He's in jeopardy of going to lap down as Mark Martin's trying to get by him on the inside. Now Porter was a rookie driver who qualified fourth, a young man from Greenville, South Carolina, as the caution now being shown to the field. What a tough break for Earnhardt. Well, I know how he feels. That happened to me at Rockingham. Just the lap before you get lapped, and the next lap, the yellow comes out. Caution on the speedway for the sixth time today. Here it is, Atlanta Motor Raceway. Back with more for the Bush Light 300 after this. new tires we see him on the top of the racetrack and about five or six cars have passed him since the green flag fell that's martin and gant your leaders they pull away by about 12 car lengths over bobby labonte in third spot dennis setzer having a good run he is back there as well in fourth spot randy porter in fifth a pair of rookies talking about how bright the future is in this series and here is setzer and he will bring the lap car of Dale Jarrett with him, along with Mike Wallace in the car number nine. Lost also a lap down. See Dale Jarrett driving by Dennis Setzer. I believe Dale Jarrett might have started that restart with a low, low, low air pressure in his tires. He fell back a little bit. Now his car looks awful strong again. That jockeying of air pressure very critical on restarts is make sure that you let the pressure build up before you go out and start running hard. Here's Randy Rojo trying to make his three wide up the back straightaway. Thanks better of it. Falls back in behind Randy Porter. LaJoy's in that blue and white and then car number 20 to see the car right in front of Dale Earnhardt, who's right in front of the 14 car of Terry Labonte. Goes rough. Get a sensor by on the outside of Porter. And can't make the pass. Great aerial shots from above, watching the you see the LaJoy makes that pass for third and fourth. Our Advanced Auto Parts air platform. Advanced Auto Parts, home of PDQ. Parts delivered quickly, getting those shots from above. Our aerial coverage. Dennis Setzer evidently has some sort of a problem. He has dropped back very quickly. Everybody's just been driving by him. He's Keep his car down low in the racetrack. As we see, he has fallen all the way back to the end of that pack. And Bobby Labonte was up there just a moment ago, and now he has fallen back. He is going, he's even fallen farther back than uh, Dennis Setzer. So these guys, you're right, they restarted the race. The car looked good, and all of a sudden they go back. Could it be to let the air pressure down too much, Brent? Well, it's very possible, you know, especially after a long run. You your problem you make an adjustment and it just doesn't work for you uh, too little of air pressure is, is very very hard to drive the car the car gets very squirrely glad to have you with us here at atlanta motor speedway benny parsons brett bodine john kernan kyle petty and you're truly jerry pudge bringing you live racing action here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Bush Light 300 as Mark Martin tries to pick up his first win in 1994. Back with more after this. Robert all we need here. 300, just 50 laps remain here in this four stop of the Bush Tour. And assisting ESP with aerial coverage of this year's Bush Light 300 are the fine folks from Advanced Auto Parks, all of PDQ, Parts delivered quickly. Gives those great aerial shots from high above Atlanta Motor Speedway. There are the lead cars. Mark Martin, the car number 60. That's the Winn Dixie Ford Thunderbird. Behind him, the Mannheim Auctions Chevrolet 54 year old Harry Gant. Black 
flag being shown to one car on the field. Looks to be the car number 55, the Tim Fiedewa machine. Apparently there's something coming from beneath the rear of the car. Our camera crew able to see something black across the back of the Luxair Ford Thunderbird. Ray and Diane machine. That's normally a sign of he has an oil leak. See how black it is? That he has an oil leak and he's leaking oil on the racetrack. We sell just a little bit of smoke there. NASCAR officials does not allow them. If you're losing any kind of fluids, you got to come in the pit, broad Jerry pit area and fix that before you can get back on the race. And Jeff Chandler and the crew will take a look at that car. Here's another driver who doesn't really have a sponsor. They put Lux Air on the car because Lux Air's driver, Mike Stefanik, unfortunately didn't make the field here in Atlanta. So Jeff Chandler was trying to run the entire year in Bush competition looking for some sponsorship. And now Mark Mew, Jeff Chandler, and the crew will go beneath the hood on that fourth Thunderbird. I tell you what, Brent. This is a really good race. I mean, Mark Martin and Harry Hill, these cars are very, very equal. I think very equal. We saw Mark Martin jump out there and, and take the lead. Harry Ginn is not letting him get away. He's staying plenty close enough to he can get a run out of him late in the race. He's going to take advantage of it. Here's a third place car. Ray the Joy. And these guys can't keep up between Mark Martin and Harry Ginn if they finish. Good run, though, back there for LaJoy. And behind him, Randy Porter. We haven't talked much about Randy Porter, but number 35, he started in fourth position. Right now, he's being shown in fourth place in the Laughlin Race Car Products Chevrolet out of Greenville, South Carolina. Good run for Randy Porter. That's him with the blue car, number 20, the Phoenix Chevrolet. Speaking of Randy Porter, let's check in with John Kernan. Telling me yesterday, if he doesn't run well today, he has no one to blame but himself. He's calling the car he has out on the racetrack right now his kit car. It's a car that he basically redid throughout the winter. It was his winter long project to redo that car and get it ready for the race here in Atlanta. So he's got a little extra at stake because he can't pull in after the race and say, hey guys, you didn't build me a good enough car. Randy, the 1985 Bush Grand National North Champion. Winston Cup races this year with the Dick Moroso Racing Team. He'll drive a Ford on the Winston Cup Tour. He's driving a Chevrolet here today in this competition. That's a great battle between uh, Randy Porter and Randy Porter. Terry Labonte. And anybody about Larry Pearson started all the way back in 43rd spot has moved his way all the way up to 6th. There's the interval between 1st and 5th place. Labonte is 9th behind so as i said a moment ago between those two cars in front the joy porter labani they're out of it right now second gap back to randy lajoy our computerized intervals here you get an idea of exactly what those guys have put up for to catch the lead to some and where are the lead to well we have to go up across the racetrack about half a lap away to find mark martin and harry Ginn. He has the second winningest driver in Bush Series competition. Just behind Earnhardt, he's won 22 times. Gann has won 20 times. But he has not been to victory lane since April of 1992. He went well last year. Mark Martin just blew. Mark just blew going down the front straight away, just like Daytona Beach. Remember, just a few laps to go. It happened in Daytona, and it happened here just as he went by the start-finish line. Incredible. With eight laps to go in Daytona, he was running second in a draft with Ernie Irvin and Bill Elliott, and it let go. And now Martin once again is snake pitting here in Atlanta. And Mark Martin moving around in there. He's switching it initially. He's trying anything he can to try to get that car refired. He's not going to give up until he's changed every switch and every ignition box he can. I believe it's terminal. Let's check in there, Pitts, John. Well, we were just standing along watching Mark's progress. You were getting a drink of the water, and all of a sudden you looked up. Mark was slowing down. Did he tell you what happened to it? Uh, he uttered an expletive and said he was going to the garage area. Had good strategy on the stop. You know, we didn't get tires on the first caution. Tried to lap as many people as we could in the middle of the race. Caught that caution with six to go. Hey, it was pretty stout. We were going to race, and we just had a hard day. You guys really turn a lot of RPMs in these engines here, and those little six uh, cylinders sometimes don't last the whole race. You really get all you can out of them, don't you? Yeah, they run around here about wide open, too. It's a big racetrack. You run fast with the big cars, and then you run fast the little cars. They just sit with them flat on the floor, no restrictor plate. They're liable to blow up. Okay, well, good luck tomorrow, Steve. Jerry? Well, John, in qualifying, he had a, a similar problem. He went to qualify, only had to run one lap, and coming off turn four to take the checkered flag, the, the engine blew. 
so he finished the last part of his qualifying lap with no power and now he comes up just about uh, what about 40 laps short from a victory and then as you said in daytona he was eight laps away from possibly winning it and the same thing happened you know and everyone wonders why in 1995 I guess next year, that, that nascar is going to change the rules and make these or let the bush guards or dictate they go to v8s and i think it's a nine to one compression v8 and everyone says why are they going to v8s why not the v6s i think we just we're seeing why they're going to be because the durability is just not there in the v6s well a moment ago these guys were racing for third now they're racing for third. In a little while, you never know in the NASCAR race, and they could be racing for the lead. So this is a very important battle right here. Good battle back here. Here's Tracy Leslie in the car number 72, the Ron Parker on machine. That's a Chevrolet, the Detroit gas sponsored car. He is right behind the Stanley Tools efforts of Larry Pearson and the MW Windows Chevrolet. Now moving to the outside, that is Terry Labonte. Good run for Tracy Leslie. Pearson takes this spot away. Tracy trying to take it away. That is for the fifth spot, no, the fourth spot. Pearson's moved into fourth, now Tracy's moved into fifth. They booted Labonte back to the sixth spot. Tracy Leslie, the 1988 ARCA Series National Champion, made the move to Bush Series competition, picked up his first win last August at Indianapolis Raceway Park. His first Bush Series victory, and now trying to get another good stop, a good finish here in 1994. Laps are winding down here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 160 of 197 are in the books. We'll have more from the Bush Light 300 when we come back after this. Now for the 1994 Bush Grand National Series Tour. 54-year-old Harry Ganey is now the last time he won. He's 52 years and two months. He still holds the record for the oldest driver to win in Bush competition. He can move it up a couple of years if he hangs on and wins one today. Here's a good battle for some young drivers. Well, one young driver to be exact, Randy Porter in the 35. And Larry Pearson always lies about his age. He's 40 to 42 somewhere, but he's having a good run also in the Stanley Tool Show. I think he learned that from his father, don't you? Yeah, probably did. That's the son of David Pearson, black in that black and uh, yellow car, Larry Pearson. This is for third place. Let's check in with John Curtis. John? Yeah, Jerry, I wanted to correct a mistake. Earlier in the uh, race, I think I said that Hubert Hensley had provided a motor for Elton. Saw you know, the Hubert Hensley team had the same engine builder as Larry Pearson. Well, when they lost a motor, they went over and bought one from the Hubert Hensley team. Yesterday afternoon in practice, they were one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. In fact, they felt they could come from the back of the pack, where they started, all the way to the front, and they cer that certainly has held true. That, of course, being Kevin Blanks, the engine builder for the Hensley operation. Of course, they've been successful over the years, even winning a Bush Series championship. So, little wonder that Larry Pearson is running as well as he is in the car number 92. There's second, third, fourth, and the red car is in fifth. Mentioned Pearson is going to run the full tour in 1994. Last year he ran 14 events for Mac Martin, and he finished second four times. Almost had it won in the Walking Good Squad. Hang on, Steve Grissom was able to make the win, but trying to get his first win in quite some time. Whoa, they nearly come together down in turn one, and the rookies hanging with him, Brett. I tell you, Randy's got a good race car, and you know, and he's not letting anybody push him around. He's he's really doing a great job here at Atlanta. Tracy trying to check out, and which one of these guys do I follow? He needs to follow the 92. He says, okay, that's where I'm going. He goes by takes the spot away. Move Randy Porter all the way back to fourth to fifth from third. If we talk about a guy, he does badly. That seems that way, but anyway, maybe we should just stop talking and let Jerry handle it. We won't mention your Winston Cup efforts in as far as tomorrow. We'll just, we'll just leave it alone. It's just forget about it. Okay. You or Kyle, either one. Hopefully, you'll both have great day. <laughs> Winding down, 30 to go. That time by, once again, we'll draw your attention to the right upper part of our screen. And you see they wind down to 29. The lap average speed. Now we're at a record pace here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Even though we've had six caution flags, we are setting an average speed. It was 124 miles an hour. Jeff Gordon said it two years ago. That's the race record. We certainly are above that with less than 30 laps to go. Now, can Pearson... And Tracy Leslie, can they run down 
the 20 car of Randy and Joy? Or are they going to try to worry about racing each other instead of catching LaJoy? That's the question that I've got. They're probably going to race each other. There's LaJoy in the blue car, the Fina Lube, the Stanley Tools. Oh, Rich Bickle goes up, hits the wall, and the caution flag is out. Job because he never went around. Boy, what a job he did! It looked like he was swatting flies in there, but uh, he had arms and legs going never went a different direction. Brett, how much can you control a car when you when you pop one like that? Well, I'll tell you, you know, the oil, the liquid comes out of that motor. It's underneath the tires. It's like driving on glass. And uh, Rich Bickle did a tremendous job of keeping that car out of the fence, keeping it from spinning around in front of the other track. Rich Bickle at 32 years of age brings out the caution for the seventh time a day, making his first ever Bush Series start in the Bondo sponsored Chevrolet. What a great run he had going. Unbelievable how he kept that car from going all the way around. I mean, you normally don't get those babies 90 degrees and bring them back, but he did it. Well, that's that short track experience. This guy's won everywhere he's been on the asphalt, on the dirt. He's been successful in ARCA competition, has run some very good efforts in Winston Cup, but now it'll all come to an end here with less than 30 laps, in fact, 27 laps remaining here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, now, now, what's the deal on tires now? Let's see has who's got, got what left. left. Has <laughs> any guy left? That's right. We, we have seen Harry Gant change. All right, let's watch the replay and see if we can see what happened to Rich Bickle. He's already blown an engine. He goes to the corner. He's very low. And all of a sudden, I guess the oil gets under the tires. Yep. And watch this, folks. This is a fantastic job of bringing the car back under control. Tell you what, he impressed me. And uh, that is a heck of an effort there. He let the car sort of go across the racetrack and use the banking to help spin, keep from spinning the car. Under caution for the seventh time today, will they pit? Will they stay on the track? We'll find out from Kyle and Kernan when we come back. Stay with us. Why use Valvoline motor oil? It's the number one choice of Indy 500 chief mechanics. Daytona 500 chief mechanics. NHRA mechanics. And Baja 1000 mechanics. For use in their race cars and in their own cars. Any more questions? People who know use Valvoline. This is the award-winning Goodyear Aquatrek with its deep groove aqua channel. And this... Our wars have been ongoing throughout the year of 1994 in Winston Cup, but there's been more of a battle, really, in Bush Series competition because of uh, last week's uh, Hoosier win with Joe Nemechek's car. Harry Gant has the Hoosier tires with his car number seven, but, uh, Benny, it's all Goodyear for about three or four cars behind him. Yeah, it is. Uh, 35 car Randy Porter has the Hoosier tires on as well. He stopped in... Changed a couple just a moment ago, and it looks like we're going back green flag racing this time by Elmo Langland, the pace car. Leading the car as he come off turn four, and Elmo, he makes the hard left, so pretty soon these fellas will be accelerated, and it's going to be show out, showdown time. 20 lap sprint to the finish here in Atlanta Motor Speedway. Kyle Petty, John Kernan, Brett Bodine, Harry, Harry Gann is leading. Yep. Benny Parsons with us here in the Bush Race. Great finish at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Ken Gant, hang on. Harry Gant on that restart opened up the bay. Between himself and Larry Pearson trying to catch back up to the radio as they enter the third turn. Out of turn four, it'll be 19 to go this time by Gant. And comes the lap car. Up here, Lejoy second. Larry Pearson all the way from 43rd starting position. Good run for Pearson. Also behind him, Tracy Leslie. Good speedway run for Leslie.
do well against the Bush Cup. Joey had a fourth place finish at Rock.
Hoffman uh, wants to go out in style, and certainly no one deserves it better than Harry Gant. What a gentleman he has been on this court for the past 20 years. These two guys drove away from Tracy Leslie. He was not able to keep up. But he is still running in fourth spot. Once again, Gant's the leader. LaJoy in second. Harry Pearson is third. As you mentioned, Benny, Tracy Leslie is fourth. Terry Labonte is fifth. And now the battle for second is going to heat up. Brandon LaJoy, the last couple laps, has had a little bit of problem keeping his car down low in one and two. And Larry Pearson is underneath him a couple times. Larry might be sizing him up, trying to decide where is his best spot to take a shot at him. Check it out. Here they go down in turn one that Brett was talking about. Let's watch as LaJoy goes in. Keeps car down pretty well that time, Brett. That time, I think he learned from the last trip through there when uh, Larry got up alongside of him coming off the two. Actually, he's holding the car down low all the way around the corner. Larry might be to the outside the next time by. Uh -huh. Seven to go. It'll be six next time by. And what you're watching once again is the battle for second position. LaJoy. In the blue car, the Chevrolet, in the, art, in the green car, you just saw leave your picture. That's the leader. About a three-second difference at the second and third. You're right, though. The Pearson car is beating LaJoy down in, in one and two. Uh-oh. Pearson trying to lead. Got a run going. Oh, LaJoy comes right. for Randy LaJoy after some great runs and apparently we have confirmed it is the engine and Bob Rinaldi who builds the motors for Dick Moroso built some bulletproof that this one just came about three and a half laps short of getting him a good top three or four finish. Fourth place car Randy Porter's worked his way back up he's got those fresh tires and watch how he closes up on the back of Tracy Leslie in the Detroit gasket car. Above. Leslie's the red car. Porter behind him is the white car. Two left to go, and now Porter comes down out of turn four, across the start finish line. Let's see if he can get him headed into turn one. This is a race for third place because our leader, Harry Gant, he's in another world. And watch as Porter goes on the outside. He's going to take that spot away, Brent. The tires right now are starting to show up. The tires that had changed on that last car. White flag this time by. Now Gann has already taken the white flag. You're watching the battle for third position. Final lap. Detroit gasket car. Tracy Leslie as they are door to door in contact. Oh. One. Whoa, Leslie hangs on it. Now here comes Terry Labonte, who will take the spot away. He takes fourth. Leslie is fifth. And it's third, fourth, and fifth. You're watching there. Meanwhile, Harry Gant is less than a quarter of a mile away from getting his first win in over a year. In fact, almost two years. 23 months ago, Gant went to the lane, and he does it for the first time in 1994. Then I'm Chevrolet. Takes the victory, Ed Whitaker's car. What a great finish. And Brett, I know you got to run and then go get in your Winston Cup car. Thanks for joining us up there today and being a part of this, uh, this great Bush Series show. I had a lot. I had a great time, guys. Uh, this replay of the of the pass. Uh, 
Tracy Leslie and Randy Porter go down in the corner and watch as Tracy goes up the racetrack just a little bit, just touches the left rear, tries to get the car off of Porter's. Tracy almost spun himself out trying to keep from spinning Randy Porter out. And here comes Terry Labonte. Terry had the momentum build up, but uh, Tracy doing all he could to get his car under control. Almost made contact there, exiting the second turn. Brent, thanks so much, buddy. Good luck tomorrow. I appreciate it, guys. Ned, get better. Get back here next time. We'll hear from Harry Gann in Victory Lane when we come back to Atlanta Motor Speedway after this. Your brand new computer already has a problem. You don't have a solution. And neither does the checkout clerk who sold it to you. Your problem's getting bigger. These things don't happen when you deal with TWC systems. First, you get free delivery and setup. The new Eagle Aquatrack, only from Goodyear. Until now. For people who know, use Valvoline. And by Allied Signals Fram Filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. Back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, crowd filing out after a great afternoon. Beautiful day for racing here. Celebration continues down there with Harry Gant becoming once again a record rider here in the books at 54 years of age, winning, going to victory lane. A little controversy earlier today involving a couple of drivers, and John Kerning is standing by with one of them. Well, Mike Wallace, involved in that first lap crash, we've already heard Deshauna and Joe kind of say it's your fault. Do you have any uh, thing to say about that? Well, I don't know how anybody can figure it's my fault. I wasn't involved in the wreck. I didn't touch nobody. You know, I led the first lap of the race. I mean, I, I, yet that I know if there's anything wrong with doing that. If uh, you look at the right side of my car, it's perfect. I believe you look at the left side of the, the pole car, it's perfect. It appears the right side's tore up. I mean, I don't know what anybody's blaming me for. I mean, we've seen this happen numerous times. Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace goes for the lead on the for first lap and they're heroes. All of a sudden, I've done it. And, you know, sometimes you gotta use a, a little common sense between your foot and your brain to say, lift if I'm in a bad situation. It appears somebody didn't lift that got in a bad situation and wanted to blame it on me. I didn't do anything wrong. I led the first lap of the race. I didn't touch anybody. So I don't know what the statements are, what the comments are. That was a race. And that was it. Okay, I'll let you, uh, on one comment, I believe it, uh, one of the drivers, I believe it was Shauna, said that you had made the statement that you were going to try and get her loose and try and get by her, or maybe it was Joe who said it. They both had made mention of that, that uh, you had plans to do that. Did you make those statements? Let me tell you, John, that is the silliest statement anybody in the world could ever make. I've wrecked here. I know how hard it hurt, hurts to wreck. If I would have did that, she could have wrecked in front of me, Joe could have wrecked in front of me. You know, that's normally called laying the guilt on somebody else, the blame on somebody else. Joe's been around, Shauna's been around. I was on the bottom, I stayed on the bottom of the racetrack, and I think they're crying the blues for something that might have been their fault, not mine, and I'm the only scapegoat because those two were out of the race and I was still racing. It's easy to criticize somebody for something that you might have something to do with, and you can get out and walk away before the blame is placed. I didn't do anything wrong. I ran a good race. You know, we, we had problems at the end of the race. The Duran Paints FTP brakes car had an oil leak. We were courteous enough to the other competitors to get to the bottom of the racetrack, try to finish it. So basically, I think they're, you know, they're upset by, because of a decision they did wrong in the race car. I was in that same predicament two weeks ago at Rockingham. We run three wide down in the corner. I lifted. I was in the center. I wasn't going to cause a wreck. It backed me up three spots on the final lap. That's where I used my sense. That's my comment. Well, that's the, w uh, the words from Michael Walter, or Wallace. Mike Wallace. Wallace. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, <laughs> some of us a little, little tense down here, Jerry, as you might imagine. Well, Mike coming out to talk to us now. You've heard from all three principals involved in that first lap incident. Here's a take a look, taking a look at the uh, official finish here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And Benny Parsons, I like being able to hear from all three people. We heard from Joe Nemechek, we heard from Shauna Robinson, and Mike Wallace had his opinion. Well, of course, and they're all three got different opinions. Two, uh, it's two to one, obviously. But people, you watch the video, hey, you know what you saw? You make the call. You make the call. A great afternoon of racing here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 43 cars started. What a great run for the car number 92 who started dead last and finished in second spot, Larry Pearson. Take a look at the point standings here. Terry Labonte, Harry Gant, Hermie Sadler holds on the third spot, Kenny Wallace is fourth, and Chad Little is fifth. Once again, 
for Benny Parsons, Brett Bodine, John Kernan, and Kyle Petty. I'm Jerry Putz congratulating Harry Dent for his win and saying so long from Atlanta Motor Speedway.